what's going on my people welcome back to the live capital youtube channel where life is for the taking it's the host himself ted talk money coming back at you to tell you something this time about iso this time about the connection between the people's bank of china and cypherium and did you hear about the news with the hyperledger fabric guys we have an awesome show lined up for you of course before we even get into this thing i hope you've been enjoying the past 24 hours because you know what you get over here another 24 hours of blessings my people you already know we have a awesome show lined up for you before we step into this thing, if you guys don't mind, please smash that like button. It really helps us grow the channel and really get this community out there. Now, my people, as you guys can see here, we're at, a, we're at a bit of an increase. Everybody was so surprised with what Bitcoin has been doing. As you guys can see, it's just been on a jump, on a jump, just looking good. So you have your Bitcoin right here at 22.2. Your Ethereum right here is at 17 on the pre-merge pump up 8% on the week. Let's see who's done something the past 24 hours. So we have here Gollum, Gollum, which has been around for quite a while, actually up 107% on the week. Interesting that really what I'm seeing is you're having a lot more people coming into cryptocurrency because of the merge. And then now they're discovering a lot of these OG chains. Really interesting to see that Ravencoin still on a pump up 23% on the 23% uh, in the past 24 hours and then 86% on the week. My goodness, guys, there must be some uh, updates or something going on over there. Oh, it looks like ETH miners are migrating to Raven. This could easily pump to 20 cents over the next few weeks. <laughs> Interesting stuff, guys. So that's the reason why people are heading over to Raven coin. The ETH miners are migrating away. All right, so let's see who we have here for our ISO camp. Your XRP is right here at 35 cents. It's looking good. Of course, I have some XLS 20 news for you all. Uh, right here, your Stellar's right here at 11 cents. Algo just looking right, 32 cents. Guys, do not let go of your Algo. Just going to put that out there, not financial advice. This is a ultimate powerhouse. A recent protocol update just made that quantum resistant 6,000 transactions per second. A lot of money behind Algorand, of course. I didn't even know this guy could even be in the top 50 again. <laughs> Moving forward, like I said, I have some uh, Hedera news I'll give you guys later. Quant right here at I thought Quant was 53 bucks for a second. Quant right here at 107, up 14% on the week. Let's see who else we have here. Iota right here at 29 cents. I mean, my guys, it is such a solid play. Uh, you could still stake your iota for assembly through the firefly wallet that is still available for you guys for about 50 50 plus days or something let's see our guy xdc right here in the oh he's at 110 right here at two six up uh two percent on the week so interesting stuff that now first thing i want to show you guys was this one check this out okay would you really want to have this range dealing with ethereum your gas fee for a transaction could either be $4 or $47. That is insane to me. Meanwhile, your XRP next to nil, XLM next to nil, Algo next to nil, even minting an NFT on Algorand is next to nil. Now let's get into it right here. So China's central bank is going to be calling for a wider usage of the digital yuan to facilitate interconnectivity or interoperability. Let's step into this thing because, of course, we're talking about the BRICS nations here. Now, before we dive into this steak dinner, if you guys don't mind, if you just got into this thing, please hit that like button because this one is juicy. So the People's Bank of China has issued a demand for further efforts to allow interconnection between the digital yuan system and conventional e-payment tech to make the usage of digital currencies by consumers more comfortable. Long story short, what are they saying? They want to make sure that this digital yuan has mass adoption. OK, so the deputy governor over there at the People's Bank of China spoke at a recent event saying that about digital banking said that the further effort should be made to broaden the scenarios and environment for such the use of a digital yuan as per a report that was published yesterday so according to this deputy governor more legislation more standards in areas such as digital ids bluetooth and qr codes to promote that interconnection of different kinds of payment tech would increase the convenience of users of their cbdc now even during the time of this recording, already you have the uh, the digital yuan is already uh, being implemented. OK, they're encouraging more people to utilize this digital yuan. The Chinese government has been running series of initiatives called red envelopes in which they give out millions of dollars worth of digital yuan uh, 
as the Chinese economy is on the brink of collapse. So really interesting stuff. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing, presenting to you guys here at Live Capital, how really how the BRICS nations are really gaining in influence. Now, we don't want you guys to have the idea that, oh, well, Live Capital is picking sides in this whole thing. No, we want you guys to open your eyes and really see what's happening on this world stage. So the use cases have also risen substantially as well for this digital yuan, with the most recent illustration being from the field of public transportation. Nevertheless, the use case of CBDCs in China is still pretty weak. The People's Bank of China wants to make sure that that digital yuan is relevant in terms of making sure that CBDCs remain attractable at the retail level and also make sure that payment space is not dominated by just two major payment providers. So right now, CBDCs are actually pretty weak right now in China. Of course, I want to bring you guys right here. China's state-backed blockchain network U.S. firm teams up to enhance the CBDC or Chinese yuan efficiency. Who, who that is? Who that is? Cypherium. Cypherium. Let's take a look at this. So China blockchain-based service network, China's BSN, a public-private nationwide infrastructure, you got that right, hybrid nationwide infrastructure project, okay? If the government wants to get involved, if retail wants to get involved, this is a infrastructure. So to spur the mass adoption of blockchain tech, the People's Bank of China, right, China's blockchain-based service network, okay, is partnering with a New York-based blockchain company to advance interoperability as the blockchain-based service network actively expands its global presence to lure who? More developers to the use of blockchain networks. So you already have here a China, Chinese-backed, public-private, nationwide infrastructure project who's partnering already here with Cypherium. Cypherium, a smart contract tech provider for focusing on central bank digital currencies has joined with the BSN to make the infrastructure more accessible to developers. Hmm, didn't we see this right here that they're actually increasing the usage for those for that digital yuan to increase interoperability to facilitate it, right? So, right here, clearly this infrastructure is there. Mind you, okay, mind you, this news isn't, you know, they've been a, this is this is relevant news, y'all. <laughs> So to get you eyes with this, the BSN will integrate its network tech provided by Cypherium that comes with what? Scalability, security, and decentralization features in a bid to enhance efficiency for central banks to develop and manage those CBDCs. Come on with it, y'all. Come on with it. If you guys are interested in actually getting yourself some Cypherium, you can grab some on Mexi. Okay, Mexi, there is a link in the description of this video. Uh, they've reached out to us, so our U.S. Uh, viewers aren't missing out on this opportunity. This is a Fed now service provider. Just going to put it out there. Okay, please dive through our library. You know, filter out the Cypherium video so you guys can really get a background on what all of this is. Don't fall for any of the FUD, y'all. Do not fall for any of the FUD. All right, right here, before I get into this one for my XRP holders, for everybody that's just in here, if you guys don't mind, please just smash that like button, just elbow drop, you know, just elbow drop on that like button. But right here, guys, coming out from Combat Kanga. So what happens now? XLS 20. XLS has been delayed and why? A nasty little exploit was found, which could see NFT creator wallets XRP chewed up in trust line reserves. E. So looks like NFTs on XRPL delayed as a new bug comes to light. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like, you know, this is good news. Obviously, it's not. You don't really want to see any kind of delays happening for any kind of innovation. Clearly on the XRPL, I mean, we're talking about, you know, the ultimate ledger that's going to be used for all the money, by the way, <laughs> putting it out there. Uh, but right here. Uh, it's going to be delayed, y'all, and this is something. So the development is a blow to XRP users who expected the XL, uh, XLS20 proposal to be implemented soon as validators voting had kicked off. However, uh, the analyst Combat Kanga shows that the delay will take a month in the best case and two and in two and a half months in the worst case. According to Combat Kanga, while the bug fix is simple, it will take a lot of time for validators to complete tests before resuming voting. It bears mentioning that Ripple's engineer, Nick, first published it at published XLS 20 in 2021 to activate native NFT functionality. In January of this year, the network launched a development network for NFT research. Okay. 
Ripple developers expressed confidence in supporting the proposal after the test completion. And then, of course, in August, the XRPL voted in favor of the actual proposal. Despite the news of this delay, XRP faithfuls will be pleased to know that NFT projects remain committed to launching on the network. You have X Whales, a project which plans to launch 11,000 unique whale NFTs on the XRPL. In response to the news, it says it remains ready to launch once the proposal proposal is implemented so big shout out x whales for what they do as you guys can see here they're going to be minting nfts for folks just just interesting stuff that's happening interesting stuff that's happening now i want to drop this I want to drop this okay for my peoples that have been listening it's looking like decent has reached out and they want to include you so as you guys can see here decent is reaching out for anybody that wants to really just spread the news spread the gospel about the decent wallet right here guys you can become a reseller or a distribution partner right now if you guys just contact iot trust right now you guys can become a official partner, guys. I'm telling you what, when it comes down to it, a decent wallet is the business. If you're still holding your crypto on the exchanges, if you're still just holding it on your phone, and if you feel like, well, that's the safest place, Ted. I only want to keep my crypto on exchanges. I'm letting you know, first of all, if you're keeping it on the exchanges, that's not your crypto. And secondly, if you're only keeping it on a hot wallet, it's constantly under threat what we do really offer you guys is, is this another chance that you can take that next step and actually put your crypto into a vault you know that that next layer of security so that's really what we want you guys to have so uh putting it out there guys of course there is a link in the description so you guys can get a discount for your decent wallet we have plenty of people here great feedback everybody loves their decent wallet i personally love the experience that you really do get with a decent wallet but they're pretty much breaching out and having you guys uh you you all yourself can uh be a part of this initiative so uh give them a contact right here on their email guys of course we love it you know not your keys not your bitcoins right Real talk, real talk. Now, moving forward right here, Central Bank of France and Nigeria are going to be joining the blockchain or, uh, <laughs> oriented hyperledger foundation now this is really good of course once we've been talking about hyperledger for quite a while uh even with the hyperledger fabric having its place with the interledger protocol it's all of these kinds of frameworks and interoperability protocols that's really where you want to put your money if you can have any kind of place anything that's good because here here's the thing when we're talking about your hyperledger when we're talking about your ibm getting involved with cryptocurrency it brings about more institutional adoption, more institutional liquidity towards your favorite asset. So we're seeing here central bank involvement now from France and Nigeria for this Hyperledger Foundation. Blockchain Association Hyperledger uh, Hyperledger has recently announced that it was bringing eight new members under its wing. So we're talking about two new central banks. Uh, we said uh, Central Bank of France and as well as Central Bank of Nigeria. OK, so Nigeria, of course, being in Africa them, themselves, South Africa being part of BRICS nations. If you don't think that South Africa is going to affect the whole continent in itself yeah you'd be mistaken so obviously this has its connections guys committing to the development the executive director of hyperledger uh, foundation and the gm of blockchain healthcare and identity at the linux foundation highlighted hyperledger's importance in the transforming markets listen to this as we will see on stage here at hyperledger global forum the tech market landscape for open source enterprise blockchains just continues to become more robust Best. Keeping that in mind. And of course, if you are new to this channel, what we do focus on really is enterprise blockchains, utility cryptos, ISO compliant cryptocurrencies, because we're not waiting on a moonshot. We're not waiting for retail attention. Really, what we're waiting on is that real crypto market. Once we actually have the destruction of your legacy market, you're going to see all of these enterprises coming to your R3s, coming to your networks of networks. And really, the reason why it's so great, why you didn't find this episode by mistake is because you guys hold cryptocurrencies that are going to be securing these networks for these enterprises, not just Jill and her 100 dog project. No, this is actually going to be for money, millions and billions of dollars. So good stuff that Hyperledger 
let's let's check this out. So central banks actually use the Hyperledger uh, resource, of course, this being for interoperability. In the meantime, several central banks have deployed the platform's open source tech as part of their research programs. For instance, the Central Bank of Nigeria uses Hyperledger Fabric. Furthermore, Cambodia uses uh, their project back home, relies on Hyperledger EROA. Uh, blockchain as do several solutions in Asia. So I want to keep that in mind as well. I was really trying to uh, find a breakdown for you guys. There are so many different kinds of Hyperledger fabrics uh, to really give you guys a more of a visual here. I want you guys to see how exactly Hedera really got into the ISO conversation even before MTech, even before CBDCs and everything. Uh, and we covered it and in, 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 in everything for you guys. The Hyperledger fabric really allows for Hedera to plug right in. So, I mean, that was a really the reason why we actually had uh, your Hedera was actually like a part of the ISO conversation because it plugged in so well with this Hyperledger fabric. The Hedera consensus service provides a ABFT order of transactions that cannot be manipulated or crash due to the action of any small group of actors. So really, see, that's what I'm saying, guys. You know, you can get really hype up for meme coins, really get hype up for like pumps and all that stuff. But when we're really talking about utility, okay, when we're really talking about about in the future when you can actually have millions and millions of dollars be added onto a network i'm talking about a real pump that's going to be there for a long time it's because of a solution that it serves it's different if we're talking about cartel money oil money that's just pumping my bags oh my god my bags is pumping no but we're talking about real enterprise real companies that are coming about and using this tech so the plug-in can also enable multiple fabric networks to receive consensus timestamps from a single ordered service. The plug-in included in the Hyperle Hyperledger Lab allows the Hyperledger Fabric BYFN build your first network sample to connect each fabric order to the consensus service. So for example, if you really to break this whole thing down for you, like we're saying, uh, IBM R3, all of them, they can have that access if you will to the these services so for example um if like uh pepsi some of pepsi's clients or something like that connecting here with the hyperledger fabric all of their business can be routed through the uh these consensus nodes from hedera just putting it out there so you guys can have a better visual um of course this is from the guy xx when he did one of his earliest breakdowns as you guys can see here it's pretty much just breaking all of that down you have uh, ibm which guys ibm worldwide ibm has been working with blockchain for years okay years it's pretty much ibm uh hyperledger is their thing to be honest with you but right here, Hyperledger Fabric 2.0 comes in with that permission consensus platform, uh, obviously coming in from uh, Hedera right here, modular pro plug, excuse me, modular pluggable for best consensus input options. Guys, when we're talking about, see, this this is this is what I, we're excited about, okay? Trade finance, digital ID management, supply chain transparency. This is utility, okay? This is when this is designed for a use, okay? This is going to drive the demand for Hedera. This is going to drive the the demand for any other asset that's running on this hyperledger fabric because we're we're actually taking care of real world use cases here my people asset tokenization and digital asset management yes just think for yourself how important that possibly could be now, right here for my Hedera holders, of course, guys, we've been really flexing for uh, Saucer Labs lately, Saucer Swap, Saucer Swap coming up on, you know, uh, rising in the ranks here. So you guys have it right here, Saucer Swap, uh, pretty much they're going to be the premier decks for Hedera. So for real, for real, for my Hedera holders, if you hold Hedera or not, if you just got into this thing, regardless, guys, please smash that like button because we really like talking about the innovations that are happening over on the Hedera ecosystem. Guys, if you really think that those governance bodies are just going to be dormant, for decades or something or even a year it's not possible hedera already has on its governing board uh boeing t-mobile google all of them and you might be ah well so what 10 you know those are major names your name dropping nothing like that of the sort when we're talking about a governance board okay we're not talking about just the centralization it's not as if hedera is only going to follow whatever google says no these governance bodies really allow the access to all of these industries to utilize hedera Okay, so I want to really just keep that in mind for you guys. Like, if you're really feeling like, well, I don't know about holding my Hedera, I don't know about getting H bar. If you're really on the sidelines about getting some H bar, please do your own research. 
All right, y'all, to really get into this main piece right here, this is going to be the main piece here. Big shout out uh, Michael Crypto uh, for really bringing us this uh, this this article, really uh, put it to our attention. Of course, before we step into this, this filet mignon, if you guys don't mind just smashing that like button so we can just really grow this channel and really get this message out there. Now, the big question, are banks really ready? For ISO 20022, 2022, however you want to call, however you want to call it. Uh, so check this out. This is from Steve Morgan, who is the banking industry market lead over there at Pega Systems. So check this out. Okay. Now, now before I step into it, so you guys can understand the ISO 20022, ISO 222, that standard has been created to bring the legacy payment system into the new age, the new digital payment system, all right? That's what they don't wanna tell you. That's the thing, they've had all of this, your Bitcoin, everything, digital assets, already planned out. ISO 222 has been running in the background since 2004, okay? They've already had the plan for everyone to speak the same language in cahoots with, I believe, uh, it's ISO 5357 or something like that, which is the uh, the ISO standard for DLT created by the quant creator. OK, if you guys didn't know, QNT, the creator himself has a ISO standard. So really, the question is, are these banks ready to migrate over to this ISO standard? Now, again, what do we focus on over here, my people? ISO compliant cryptocurrencies, mainly focusing on the chosen five. OK. Algorand, XRP, XLM, IOTA, and Algorand, who have done the back end work to make sure that they are compliant with these financial messages. Okay, that's really what we want you guys to understand. Clearly, there the FUD has been destroyed when it comes down to this. You guys can actually see ISO compliant cryptocurrencies have their place. These banks are moving over to it, and we're talking about a point in time where all financial uh, messages will be speaking one same language that is going to be full of data. Guys, we have to prepare ourselves. So. In today's global economy, real-time payments, complete transparency, risk management are what? The keys to a successful payment business. You need real-time payments, complete transparency, risk management, and a global economy. That's DLT. DLT takes all of that. D I'm telling you, crypto takes all of that. So, and you can call it XRP. OK, we'll take care of all of that. A successful payment business. XDC can take care of all of that. Algorand can take care of all of that. Like we said, 6000 transactions per second. So over the, over the last few years, there have been a number of initiatives and organizations that have strived to achieve a level of standardization for what? Payment messaging. The decision by major central banks and SWIFT to migrate to ISO 222 from August 2022 on an opt-in basis and November 2022 for general availability signifies the biggest breakthrough to date. Okay? The banking industry market lead says that the decision signifies the biggest breakthrough to date all right i don't know steve i didn't tell steve to write that we've been talking the same stuff for like a year now okay the uk payment industry is moving to iso 222 the emerging global standard for payment messaging let's slow down right what just happened over in the uk operation unicorn huh the bank of england has joined the movement and published its migration approach of non-payment messages to the ISO messaging standard for CHAPS, their direct participants. This change includes the Sterling High Value Payment System, huh? the HVPS High Value Payment System, CHAPS, will migrate to ISO in April, okay? In April, right, of 23. So thinking of messaging systems as the pillars of banks' payment processes, it goes without saying that harmonized standards and rules for the exchange of payment messages and data are of critical importance. Let me repeat that, okay? Harmonized standards, rules for the exchange of these actual messages are of critical importance. So what I present to you guys, my people, is that Zenfin has made sure that they are, they have harmonized standards and rules for exchange of payment messages. Algorand, harmonized standards and rules for the exchange of payment messages and data, okay? XRP, harmonized standards and rules for the exchange of payment messages and data. 
Okay, XLM, harmonized standards and rules for the exchange of payment messages and data. Better data in payments promises to deliver significant long-term benefits for the economy. It speeds up cash flow, improves liquidity, enables businesses to grow faster. So again, we're talking about this ISO standard. If you, you know, after this video, you guys might hear, you know, oh, well, there's so many other different ISOs. ISO, ISO 222 isn't just the best one. Guys, clearly we're seeing a banking industry market lead. Okay. There's a lot of schooling that goes in that. He's presenting this information and I'm presenting it to you now. Now, Pete, like we've already discussed it with you guys, FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. This channel is FUD proof. Okay. You want to go to the other channels and find out, feed, get fed FUD? Go. Go ahead. But right here, I'm showing you guys, these, this message is ISO standard. It speeds up cash flow, improves liquidity in a way that the world has never seen before. To adapt to this new messaging standard and accompanying data requirements, organizations are right to seriously consider investing in processes that make it as easy as possible to adapt. But how might organizations take this transaction or this transition? They use HSBC for an example. The bank is currently focused on streamlining its operations to align with SWIFT's ISO program to roll out real-time payment schemes to all its major markets. I believe HSBC, where are they at? The UK. The UK. So within the bank, payment services is a critical global function providing payment processing, investigation, sanction screening, messaging services to consumers. All of this functionality is underpinned by HSBC's core data services. All of that, all of it, it's there. And of course, guys, I mean, we've, we've gone over, you could look into uh, Project Jura, Project Dunbar, all of these central banks have already done uh, certain experiments to make sure that the interoperability is there once this ISO standard is about. You see what I mean? You can't really have a transition to, the, to everyone speaking the same language without preparation, right? If we're going to be speaking all of this, we have to speak it before we all have to speak it, right? So the company's global payment investigation solution is built on a framework that enables efficient exception processing, messaging, interoperability support, and automated case creation. Guys, if again, if you really just think this ISO standard is just, ah, oh, it's just hype. This ain't nothing. It's just hype. I'm, I'm really pleased that this community has done its own research, taken on the responsibility to be out here in the crypto community, and slay those dragons you get what i mean slay the misinformation that's out there they want retail not to pay attention to this they want you guys distracted with monkeys and doggies and memes and all of that stuff when really we're seeing that the big money where they're they're securing for the future this iso standard is no joke so the ISO 222 migration will take years to fully implement and will not be uh, without its challenges. But nonetheless, the banks that are willing to invest in the right tech, huh? The banks that are willing to invest in the right tech and take the right steps to implementation will be at the forefront of converting a messaging mandate to a competitive advantage, allowing for improved customer service, improved customer experience. Guys, so again, we're asking the question, are banks ready for ISO 20022? All right. But look, guys, I seriously appreciate you all. Appreciate you guys making it to this part of the video. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like button as well. If you like how we're coming over here, hit the subscribe and as well hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these updates. But I'll see you later. Peace.